Hello, everyone. Um, so I hope you all know Avicii. If you don't, then uh, I got a lot more work to do. I'm a bit jet lagged, but um, I'm gonna run through this. I'm gonna talk about the concept of music as a front runner of change and what that means. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with this word. It's a very popular word since the digital revolution uh, caused a lot of sparks in a lot of industries. And I would go as far as to say that music business has probably one of the highest frequencies of disruptive ideas. Disruption to me is something that moves the needle and sparks a little revolution in, in an industry. Um, just a little bit so you understand why I believe this. Um, the history of the music business was very exclusive to the majors. Um, it was very easy to make music, but on a mass scale, it was hard to distribute. And I'm talking, you know, music business glory days 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And it was exclusive to the majors because they owned all the value chains. They owned access to the mass production facilities. They owned the distribution channels, the sales networks. They even owned the shelves in your local record store. And it was almost impossible to break through on a mass scale without signing up to them. And just to exemplify this, I brought a quote from Larry Harris, imagine director of one of the majors in the late 70s, Casablanca Records, speaking on Billboard magazine and editor Bill Wardlow. He said, we leveraged the relationship as much as we could. Eventually, I could walk into Bill's office, tell him the position on the charts I felt a given album should have, and lo and behold, there would be. Um, so they really used this to sign a lot of artists. Um, and that gave way to some ridiculous standards set in the industry. I mean, an artist, first and foremost, cares about uh, distributing their message, exposing their voice, their music, their, the music they created. And the, the majors took advantage of this because they owned all the channels. And some of the standards that were set back in the day were that you get an advance on your own money. It's not a fee when you sign a record deal. That, that's what people think. So you get $30,000, $100,000, you think, yeah, I really signed a great deal. But they have number guys that crunch the numbers in the back and they mitigate the risks and they, they, uh, they know what they're going to make. Um, and the split was normally 80, 90% in their favor. And that's a lot if you really think about it. They take 80 to 90% of all the money made off the music. And they used to motivate this by saying, well, we source all the content, we, we manufacture all the CDs, we package, we distribute. But they all deducted all those costs. Even the marketing, they deducted the salaries. So essentially, we're talking 89% profit split. And you'd be tied up for about five years on average, sometimes more and rarely less. And just to visualize this, by the time you, your advance is recouped and you start getting paid more than the initial fee, they already, they already made four to nine times that money. And this was just the, the sales. I mean, you also had lawyers, business managers, everybody was really taking advantage of the artists wanting to spread their music. And then came the crisis. I mean, it was all great for the, for the industry until illegal downloading became a fact. I mean, it happened under everyone's nose. Everyone really knew about it. They just chose to ignore it, and it hit everyone with a surprise. It almost brought down the entire industry, you know, to, to, it caused it to implode. It brought it down to its knees. People were fired left and right. Um, they were really panicking. And then came the solution, iTunes and Spotify. Everyone thought, you know, now everyone solved the, solved the, the equation. There's hope. It's, it's over. The crisis is over. But that's a myth because it's still there. It's constant, you know, the music is a co business is constantly evolving. It's still changing. It's still very much in trouble if you look at the, the general picture for artists, for the industry. And you still haven't found the right solution, which is very uh, um, hopeful and inspiring in, in many ways, because there's a lot to do. If you look at um, Napster, which was the big, big disruptor 10 years ago, um, Napster, Napster gathered 80 million users in, in a fairly short amount of time. And they tried to go legal. That's the thing. Not many people know this, but Napster actually tried to make the service legal in some way. But they, the, the whole music industry saw it as a threat, and they shut them down. Um, they didn't even try to resolve you know, any legal, legal um, um, deal with Napster. Now, Spotify, basically, they mimicked the Napster platform. Um, they looked at you know, how, how people use the platform, and they made, they made a legal version of that. Um, and they started about five years later. Um, now, 
since they started, now six years later, they're, they're up to 40 million users, and they're valued at over $5 billion. Now, Napster was double that, and they were shut down. Now, go figure. So Spotify did one thing right. They, they listened. The customer knows best. The consumer decides. If the consumer tells you that this is the way they want to consume music, if the consumer tells you that, that the traditional ways aren't applicable to these 80 million people or 40 million people, whatever, you should listen to that. You know? And as an industry, you should try to find a solution for, for that um, customer request and not really fight it. So that's really what, what Spotify did. Um, and they, they, they mute, I, li I like this word because it explains a lot what's going on. Um, iTunes and Spotify was a mutation of the uh, traditional buying experience after looking at the online user experience. And, and the quicker something mutates, the quicker it evolves. And in music, you have a sh really short lead time. I mean, compared to any other industry, say something that's close, a movie. A movie's done in two years at best. You know, a, a physical product, you have to, you have to produce, test, um, package, get a, a approval from authorities, then distribute. That can, that can take years. Even an app, if you're an app developer, you have to, you have to uh, develop the app, you have to test it, and et cetera, before you get it to market. With, with music, you can make a song in one day. I mean, most of Avicii's biggest hits were made in one single day. And then you can distribute them worldwide immediately through so many different platforms, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pandora, iTunes, Spotify. Um, and with that, you have a, a plethora of, of, of content. You have a plethora of products. Um, music is probably one of the most competitive businesses out there. I mean, you probably all know people that, that at least wish they were musicians or are musicians. And with all this product, you can do a lot of experimenting. And this is where music excels. Because the more you experiment, the more you find the right recipe for your own market. You tweak and tweak until you find the right recipe. And once you have, you run with it, and you can apply it for the time on, on many of these products. And then when the market changes, you tweak again. Um, we have had an example. We, 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 um, we took on a challenge ourselves. Uh, even though we have the, the entire distribution in place and we're working with a lot of um, these, these value chains ourselves, we wanted to challenge ourselves. We took on a project. This is just a side project. We, we do a lot of these things. But just as an example, this project um, was the world's biggest crowdsourced song, is what we called it. So we created a website where we, where we crowdsourced um, a song completely from all over the world. We had, we had contrib contributions from 140 different countries. And all in 28 days, we created the song and distributed it. And we had a total of over, over 138 million impressions, multi-platinum sales, which is a big deal in the music industry, all without spending a dime on marketing. We didn't go through any traditional means of, of uh, pushing, put, promoting or launching the track. So it was a big eye-opener for the industry. And it was just a side project that we did. And it just shows if you're innovative, you can create a lot of opportunity in the music business without going through these um, dated, dated uh, value chains. Um, and, and this is my point. So it boils down to that the music business is no longer exclusive to the majors. Anyone could really get into the music business and, and you could make a lot of profit. I mean, the majors are, are, are valued at, at pretty high numbers and you know, they're, they're all becoming very dated and they're still panicking over, over the crisis that is still there. And if you look at the standards that I brought up earlier, you can see that you don't even need to go to half of that to be a hero for the artists, and you can still profit from, from helping them. And just to give you an idea of, of music sales globally valued, today is valued at over $40 billion. And this is just sales, but you can sell anything through music. I mean, you can sell a car, you can sell a, a, a toothpaste, you can sell a fashion brand. Um, I mean, just look at Beats. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but Beats was a music service that came in with uh, headphones and everything, sold through music, through artists. It sold to, um, to Apple at $3.2 billion very recently. Uh, and, and like I said, Spotify valued at over $5 billion. So add that to the numbers already there, you have a much bigger number. Um, and in, in, in essence, uh, the music business is back to being a startup because of the crisis that is still there. So there's so many opportunities. And some of the gaping holes that I've just brought up, um, just to give you an idea, radio has more or less looked the same since the 60s. 
it hasn't really evolved. Uh, so there's a big opportunity to, to create radio 5.0, as I put it, you know, skipping a lot of steps because nothing's really happened. Um, if you have an idea about that, let me know. Uh, same thing with distri digital distribution in China or Africa. They're huge markets. Uh, no one's been able to crack that yet either because the physical market in, in, in China or Africa was always uh, piracy. It wasn't worth for any of the majors to go in and start building these uh, um, production facilities, distribution channels, because the physical market was so openly um, uh, exposed. Um, and discovery tools will always be um, super um, valuable to the industry because you're not only are you helping fans find new music, you're helping the industry launch new artists and music. And just looking around, you know, I've been, I've been around the, the, the conference a little bit, seeing a lot of interesting um, app developers and, and, and services. And I think if, if, people, if, you, if th those people, entrepreneurs or investors or app developers took on the challenge to revolutionize the music industry in their way, I'm sure they'll find it. And I'm 100% sure that when they find it, they, they'll also find that it's applicable to many other markets or, or industries. And that's why I believe that music really is the front runner of change. Thank you.